our local library, the KPL or the Kitchener Public Library, does a really fantastic job with social media. A researcher at the University of Ottawa had come down, was doing a paper on how libraries across Ontario were using social media to engage with the larger community, specifically the use of Twitter. She'd noted that despite our relatively small size, having a population of about a quarter million, the KPL really punches above its weight when it came to Twitter. It was actually through Twitter that I learned about their program called PubLit. And PubLit is their sort of no homework book club. Just a bunch of people get together at a bar, drink beer, and talk about books. There isn't a specific book that you're actually tasked to read. You just show up and talk about what it is that you've been reading. You get some pretty eclectic people coming out, but it's grown from a small group of about seven people to our last one being about 20 to 30 on a typical end of month meeting. Anyway, they were having a little bit of fun on Twitter and thought they would do some book recommendations to anyone who retweeted. They'd troll through your Twitter feed and try and determine what would be a good recommendation for you. Knowing that I was an active participant in public, they thought it was time I'd up my game and join their book club that actually talks about a specific book. That month was Where the Air is Sweet by Tasneem Jamal, who was actually a local writer. Now, I was a little bit reticent at first, I must admit. It seemed like a story of a big fish in a small pond, and that I'm really much more concerned about the quality of writing as opposed to the proximity of the writer. But I thought I'd play along and picked up the book. And let me tell you, it was a fantastic book. It was one of my favorite reads so far of 2015. A little bit about the author. Tasneem Jamal and her husband quit their jobs as editors of the Globe and Mail and decided to pack up their things along with their three-year-old and nine-month-old daughters and move to Tanzania, as you do. She, to write her novel on him to pilot planes. Things didn't go exactly as planned, and it certainly wasn't your typical eat, pray, love, follow your bliss escapade. It was fraught with a lot of worry and uh, craziness. But in the 10 months time that she spent there, she did manage to get a very good start on this book. Where the air is sweet is about the ethnic cleansing that happened in Uganda when Idi Amin came into power. In 1972, he decreed, because he was told in a dream, that the Asians had 90 days to actually pack up their things and get the heck out of Uganda. When I say Asians, it's much the same way that Tasneem refers to them, and those are the people of the Indian subcontinent, not necessarily Koreans or Vietnamese, etc. This sort of ethnic cleansing that was happening that resulted in over 80,000 Asians being displaced from their homes. And these weren't newly landed immigrants. These people had lived there for generations, had built businesses, had built some of the infrastructure as far as Uganda goes. Well, the book opens with a harrowing recount of Mumtaz taking her kids to the nearby pool when Idi Amin appears flanked by four rifle-carrying bodyguards and his five-year-old son dressed in full military gear. Mumtaz and her kids are the only Asians visible in the pool, and this is in the midst of the purge itself. She's frantically trying to get the attention of her young daughter to get her out of there. The entire time, the five-year-old is watching very carefully Mumtaz's daughter, who is also the same age as he is. When we met Tasneen Jamal at the uh, book club, though, she recounts that this actually happened to her, and the young child in the pool that was being frantically called to to get out of there was, in fact, Tasneen Jamal herself. In the case of Tasneen Jamal, they ended up here in Kitchener, my hometown. And there is that sort of glint of familiarity, which is awesome. How often do you get to read a book that takes place in the very city that you live in? I recognize a lot of the landmarks. Mumtaz's daughter goes to Howard Robertson School, the same school that I went to. She references the Schneider sign, which I always remember seeing coming back from Toronto on the 401. But that alone isn't the reason that I love this book. It is so incredibly written for a debut novel. And it's harrowing, beautiful, and wonderfully rendered. If you like Chimamanda Ngozi's Half a Yellow Sun, this is the book for you. I just wish more people knew about this book and could read it because it is that good. And it is easily one of my favorite reads of this year. The book club meeting itself was wonderful. Tasneen Jamal was a wonderful, gracious host. Happily signed my copy of the book, which was fantastic. And shared a lot of personal anecdotes and stories that went into the writing of the book and how she had used the library itself as a primary resource to do some of the research herself. It was a wonderful confluence as far as the local community, the library, and books coming together. And I'm sure all of this, the fact that it's based in Kitchener, the fact that I met the author, the fact that our library played a huge part in the creation of this book, and it influences how much I do like this book, but I do think that it stands on its own merits. It is that good of a debut novel. 
and I hope more people do discover it in time. I know there was a major shitstorm on BookTube about the validity of libraries, and there were sort of lots of opposing views, but my little library is doing fantastic things, and I'm grateful to them for having introduced me to this particular book. I'm also excited for the next One Book, One Community read, which is Station Eleven, and looking forward to having Emily St. John Mandel come down for the reading itself in September. And yes, our library, despite its small size and despite the fact that it's servicing a relatively small community, is doing some pretty kick-ass things. And it's funny because Arab Bousset, who was on the opposing side, saying that perhaps libraries are past their relevance, actually went to university just down the road at the University of Guelph. And it, it's a shame that she didn't get a chance to know or hear about a lot of the services that our library is actually doing. I really do think it's a valuable part of the community and they're doing some pretty kick-ass things. Hopefully your library is doing much the same, or at least trying to. Anyway, we're the Air Suite, Tasneen Jamal, Kick-Ass Read, Canadian debut novel, awesome. Go out, check it out. <music>